Let's work on the next section. You learned how to build a dashboard. We learned how to build a geocoding app. Now let's build, combine both. Let's build an app which has a map and which has a dashboard. This is how most data-driven apps are, where you have some data, you want to allow users to explore that spatially on a map, as well as using the attributes that you have, you they can visualize and explore the data from the, the data table they have. The app that we're going to build looks something like this. The same data that we have, we have the CSV file containing this data. We also have a shape file containing the districts and we have the data for each of the districts. So when we select a different district, we want the, the chart to update and we want a map to zoom to that district so we can display the data. So let's see how we can set this up. We'll create a new folder. We're going to call it mapping dashboard. If you have the stream with server running, stop it. So we don't get confused with that. We use CD double dot to come out of that folder and we go to the new folder we created, mapping dashboard. Let's create a new file. That will be our app.py for this particular app. And we're gonna start this with our app. We'll save this inside of this mapping dashboard. And from our terminal, we're just going to do streamlit run. All right, so this is our basic structure of the dashboard. I want to show you some new stuff that we've done in this app. Here we have a side panel, which can be hidden and which can be open. This is the feature of Streamlit, which allows you to have it's a layout structure where you can put some stuff on the sidebar. This is quite helpful when you want a bigger space for the map, but you still want a space to display charts and have some controls that the user can do this. And the way you do this is in Streamlit is you have a sidebar component. So you can say st.sidebar and put elements inside of that. So when you say st.sidebar title, the title goes here, st.sidebar info, get it here. Now, when you create a new element, you can choose to put it in the main layout where you can say st dot text box, or you can say st.sidebar.textbox box and the text box goes here. So you can choose where to put the element. The sidebar is an auto configured. So based on the data you have, it will auto resize. Users can also resize it or hide it. And again, it's a responsive sidebar, so it works well on different layouts. Let's add some more code to our dashboard. We're going to uh, put similar code to read our data from our different sources, we have a CSV file and we have the, the geo package file containing all the data layers. So we read our CSV file from the same data source. This is what we've done before. We also change our function slightly so that we can give a URL and whatever URL we give, that will be cached. This allows us to read more data using the same function. Same with GDF, give a URL and a layer. So when you read the layer, that data frame will be cached and you can use this function to read multiple data. We're going to use this function to read the district layer and the highways layer both. So we create those data frames. We create the read the CSV file. And when I run this, it's going to spend some time loading the data. It's going to fetch the data for the geo package, read the data, and it'll take a few seconds for the first time to read it, download it, read it, and cache that data. Once it's done, it's going to be done. So if you want to display such user state, you can Say I have a text box which says loading data. Once this whole thing finishes, it'll change the text to be loading data done. So you can see my data is being loaded. Once the data is read, it'll change this text to be done. You can see now it's done. So if you want to show some progress and say I'm doing something, and then you can, so here we created st.text, save the value of that here, and then we can say dot text. So we can update the text to any element using this variable. We have a data, let's create the, the elements out of this. So we can create the chart and put it on our sidebar. This is the same code as what we had done before in our dashboarding example. We create our figure using pyplot, and, and once we have this thing, instead of putting it as st.pyplot, we say st.sidebar.pyplot. And this will allow us to get this in the sidebar. We need to change our import as well. So, so now we have a chart in, a dash, in our sidebar. And this is the interactive chart that we created before. 
So we could put it in a sidebar. Let's add our map in our main area that we want. So we're going to use leaf map this time. Instead of using folium directly, we are using leaf map. The advantage is that we can use the leaf map API to do all different things. We can also use different backends. If you want to switch to a different backend, we can do this easily without changing a lot of our code. Let's initialize leaf map map. So we create a map, we see which controls we want. We add a base map. We can add the different data frames. We can add the district data frames and tile it using the color that we have. Let's see if this works. Once we have that, we can say M to streamlet. So this M is our leaf map map and we need to add, create, add it to app. So there's a special function to streamlet that is provided on many streamlit components. So many leaf map components. If you're using a leaf map component and you want to add it to streamlit, they'll have a to streamlit function on that. So most backends will be able to add to streamlit app. So we add it and now we should be able to see the map on our data. We could see a map. You could see we have this shape file that we could render here, geo package layer that we could render and we could see interact with that. So now we have a pretty nice looking app where we have this drop down which selects us. And when we do this, the app loads us. We still are not doing anything specific to this particular input. When the user changes, what we want to do is we want to say, user selected this, I want to zoom my map to that particular district and add that as a layer on top. So the way you can implement this is we say whatever the district was selected. So user selects a district. We say, we'll create a new data frame just by filtering a district to the selected district. So whatever district we select, we filter to that and just add that to the map as a separate layer. So we say, we, whatever selected region you selected, we add it. And then we said zoom to layer true for this. So wherever what is selected, your map will zoom to that. Let's see the change of this. Now, when I select a different layer, you can see chart updates, I get a new data frame and a new layer and the a map updates to that. And this is how kind of add this interactivity to the map where you can drive the map through your settings. Your settings are then used to add or filter your data layers and split some map. How do we allow users to control the layer? Again, the user can turn this layers on and off, but nobody really interacts with this. Better way, better user interface will be to have a drop down or some kind of layer control here on the side panel. So user can choose which layer to add. So let's add new select box. So I'm going to add on the side panel, st.sidebar checkbox. And you can see there's a new checkbox that I added using this ST dot checkbox, say overlay roads. So when I check this, I want a new layer to be added. If I uncheck this, the layer should not add. The way this works is when you check this, the value is set to true. If I uncheck this, the value is set to false. So I can check what is the value of this checkbox and say if overlay is true, do something. If not, don't do anything. So I can now say once I've added my data, I can say if my overlay is true, I can go and add some other layer on that. If the overlay is not true, this block will not get executed. So you can see my app works as usual. I can keep you know, in, working with the app. And right now this block is not executed because my overlay is off. If I say on, it's now going to run and say, okay, I want to overlay one more data layer. And I have the roads layer added to it. And the user says, okay, I'm done exploring the roads. I don't want them anymore. You can turn it off and they forward. This is a much better way to add your layer control and you can drive this through a checkbox. You can build a nice UI around that, or you can do a drop down and say, select the layers that you want to display and you can select and they can be displayed. And if you have a lot of data, split it across different layers and then display that. Maybe if you have, this is only a subset of roads. If I had a lot of roads data, I would have different files for different districts. And I would say, if this select the district, go and load that file and render that. Right? So you can kind of have this kind of conditional behavior of your app. Try this out. We can try adding the full code of the app here. So from the step number four, you can copy the full code from the course material, save it and see your app in action. A pro tip is all the AI assistants are actually very good with Streamlit. 
So Gemini, ChatGPT. Now you know how the app works. You can literally describe the app you want and he'll write code for you. So you can say, build me an app with this elements in the sidebar, a leaflet map on here that loads the data from this data frame and you'll get a code template and you know where to make changes. And that's a key skill now that you know. Once you know how Streamlit works, what to change, you can really do this very fast. I know many of our students, they are building apps in just a few hours because they can now describe what they want and then change stuff from the output they get from the AI assistants. So do make use of them. As usual, they're not perfect. You'll get some code and maybe there's a mistake in one line, but now you know what to look for and how the app works. You should be able to build those apps quite fast. When you have your app and you're happy with it, you can click on this button deploy. It gives you two options. You can deploy this app on Streamlit Community Cloud, free, you can just host apps and, or you can do whatever in your custom cloud or whatever app you're using. We'll learn how to do this next. I'll show the workflow.